Women's Rights in Europe in the 1900s. In the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 1 states, All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. In Article 2, it states, Everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration, without distinction of any kind such as race, colour, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth or other status. So these articles are basically saying that every single person on this planet is equal to each other. We all have the same rights as each other does. My name is Henriette Goldschmidt. The year is 1877. I am from Berlin. If you do not know where that is, I am from Germany. I am a very strong feminist in my country. I have helped people. I have helped young women become strong in themselves. We have raised against the men in our country. Sometimes I think we have our city fathers, but where are our mothers? Between 1900 and 1939, women are gradually accepted into universities all over Germany. Elsie Edith Bowerman. The year is 1918. I am a British lawyer and a suffragette. I am part of Women's Social and Political Union. In 1918, women got the right to vote, but only if you are 30 or older than 30. That is not fair because I am 19 years old. I believe women should have the exact same rights as men. It is not fair just because a man is a man and a woman is a woman. We should be able to vote as the same age as a man can vote. Just because a man is a man, that just makes no sense to me. I know. My name is Wim Hora Edema. The year is 1940. I was born in Russia, 1914, but I am of Dutch descent. I am a very well-known author, but I am also known for my literature, children's literature. I am also known for being a radical feminist but also for writing a radical feminist, feminist monthly magazine. It is called Obzig. I'm a writer, a journalist, an editor, and a very strong supporter of feminism. I'm also known for my publishing too. People have said I'm very well known in Russia. I'm also one of the best known women in Russia for the second wave of feminism. Because I was born in 1914 and women were given the right to vote in 1918, some people question why I am a feminist still after giving the right to vote. Well, when I was four, I realized that we were not given the same equal rights as men even though given the right to vote. Men are still given more power than us women in Russia. We just are not treated the same as men. We deserve better. We are men, war men. We have the right. In 1905, universities opened to women in Russia.
1914, married women are allowed their own internal passport, which is an identifying document used by Russia to control and monitor the internal movement and residence of its people. Um, the first Soviet Constitution of Equal Rights, which is uh, also known as Constitution of USSR, is created in 1932. In 1942, women are formally accepted into the military in Russia. My name is Jill Sheila Tweety. I was born in 1936, so I am 24 years old. I am from Britain, I was born in Britain. I'm a very proud feminist and I'm a writer and a broadcaster. I'm very well known for my column in The Guardian. It's very well known column if you heard of it. My column is called Letters from a Faint-Hearted Feminist. I produce articles on feminist issues because I'm a feminist. The Custody of Infants Act of 1839 gave women the right to petition the courts for custody of a woman's own children up to the age of seven. And it also gave a woman the right to gain access of the older children um, she gave birth to. The Matrimonial Causes Act of 1857 was an act that was created to establish a model of marriage based on contract rather than sacrament. And this act was reformed, or it reformed the law on divorce. The Sex Disqualification Removal Act was created so that a person of any sex shall not be disqualified by sex or marriage.